this very beach on the 14th of September 2018 that I announced the kind of idea that became Piano Book, the prologue, if you will. And uh, it's so exciting today to be back on this beach because I've got some really exciting news, but more of that later. First, an awakening courtesy of David Hillowitz. So today we're going to do something we haven't done in a while, which is a contact tutorial. So something a bunch of people have asked me about recently uh, is how to set up multiple mics in contact. So is this going to be the day when I have a go at scripting, the first time I've coded anything since the good old days of the BBC Model B? Being able to mix your own signals, this is something that I've been struggling with, the different microphones we use. So I thought I'd go about creating an interesting signal pass. Now, if you remember in a video, a few videos back, about us creating a tape orchestra, I said to the lads, whilst you're at it... Well, can you just mute the channel? So, what are we doing, on, Harry? We are trying to devise a way of sampling the piano through a delay, but creating a system where we can have the delay on the beat at 90 BPM, Mm -hmm. and be pitching samples around so that they both fit uh, a different centre pitch, but th th that change in speed of playback also gives us a tempo of delays that fits onto our 90 BPM grid. Right. So effectively, if we've got uh, something that's doing crotchets at 90 on a root note, if the maths is correct, we think that pitching this sample up to play back at a pitch of the G above, uh, or a fifth above, uh, will give us a triplet feel over that, over this 90 BPM grid. Okay. So we're going to sample a cluster in two batches of seven notes. Yep. Kind of and then, and so high. basically, the, the 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 G will be the C will will be the C pitched up to the G. The A will be the D pitched up to the yeah the A. I think the maths is right, but I, we'll probably just have to do it to find out. Okay. So. Ready when you are. So what's the signal path? The first one to mention is the Porter Studio. So that's capturing just the raw signal from the piano. So we record that in onto the tape and then uh, rewind hit play again. This one doesn't have a sync head, so kind of more professional tape machines, you have a, a sync head which is basically takes the signal out from the record head so that you can hear what's being printed to tape in, in real time. We don't have that here, so we just record onto it, monitoring on input, rewind all the way to the start, press play, then you're listening back from the tape. And just standard tape or has something? This is standard C60, okay. so uh, one hour tape, we didn't need that long at all. And you haven't affected the tape or anything because th there's, st there's stuff that you can do with tape, isn't there? Yeah, so we've been kind of crinkling and, and writing pencil on tape for the other stuff we've been doing today, but this is just a okay, clean, clean, straight from the factory C60 tape. Uh, so that's coming in, just slightly hotter than usual, just to get a bit of tape compression. And then that plays back through primarily the echo fix mm -hmm. and we've timed the speed of this, the tape speed, so that we get repetitions on the beat. So we're on a 90 grid and that's giving us crotchets at 90 back. You can see here that we got that by reading from the third read head, which is the furthest one away, and then the speed's right down towards the bottom. So it's pretty much as nearly as long a delay as you can get out of this particular model. And then we've also got the, the Porter Studio feeding our pedal array, which at the moment is just the Otto Bam. I actually have no idea what it's doing. Harnix set up a chain on that that's just a really nice kind of washy reverb that's not too long. So that's giving us a reverb, that's giving us a delay, this is giving us a tape affected raw signal. So next thing to do is to edit these samples, get them into contact. I'm not sure how contact's going to have multiples of the same samples within the same groups, but we'll see in a moment. But talking of tapes, someone has done a cassette version of a kawaii. This is from Kev Hay, and he has this to say about it. I live in the sub tropics on the most eastern point of this island continent. It's hot, salty, humid, and very sticky around these parts, which 
is definitely not very good for a piano, as you concur. It could be so much worse though. I sit, hiss and wait. I listen and wobble a little. Today you can hear me in all my glory through a time-travelling device, the mini cassette dictaphone, and it's not clean and neither would I want it to be. Do with me what you will, much love, baby kawaii. And I'm loving the way that you presented that to us. It's just so awesome. I think that you've not saved the, um, no, the release, just making it just a little bit more natural. It's interesting going back to that original prologue video to see how similar all the rooms in that hotel appear to be. Right, so, what I got back from the ever meticulous Harry was actually a selection of different versions of the signals. We have the straight version, which is just what went straight into the computer. We have the tape version, which is what went into the Porter Studio. And then we have the hotter tape version. So you can guess which one I'm gonna go for. I like it hot. Noise reduction is gonna be key on this experiment because of the use of the Porter Studio. Whilst we love the artefacts and the whir and the flutter and the pitchiness and the kind of hotness of the tape, it does also add a lot of hiss which would be problematic with sample buildup. So I've decided to noise reduce the entire signals and then by grouping the signals together I go into editing and remember you know we edit to the beginning of the sample and then what we need to do is then drag back once all of those edits are complete, drag back by a uniform amount. This time I'm gonna do it like a 16th note at 90 BPM. I'm also programming in some fades, which I'm going to bake. So there's kind of two parts of the process. I edit, bake, and then re-edit. Next, the arduous task of naming. Right, a quick recap. So basically what we're doing is we're recording just a few notes chromatically from the scale and then we're going to then duplicate those samples further up the scale. So the C will be used to form two notes in the scale and because the delays are fixed to straight kind of crotchets or quavers for the first half of the octave, it'll then be triplets, we hope, for the second. But I'm just, I'm struggling a little bit. I don't know why we've recorded to, to, to G because that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and then we'll just have one, two, three, four, four notes of the triplets. So I'm, I'm just gonna basically test it quickly. So let's just open up an EXS. Oh, by the way, the video that I did uh, a couple of days ago, linked above, where I said that I'm kind of getting used to working with these, these are absolutely useless for doing music on, you're absolutely right. Basically what I was doing was I was mixing a TV show, so I wasn't actually playing anything, but uh, if you try and play something in, it's just ghastly latency. So I'm actually working through the speakers today. Sorry, neighbors. Right, so let's have a look at, let's take the echo fix. Let's just take the C. Okay, it's key that we work the sample offset off because that isn't gonna be uniform because it's just being sped up as we go up the keyboard. And I found a nice way of doing this that's kind of quite neat. So we've got our start point and we've got the pre-delay, which is a 16th at 90 BPM. What I'm just gonna do is just literally chop out the pre-delay and then you can see in the wave editor the actual length of samples, which is exactly 8,000. So let's put that forward, 8,000. That's not quite right, the F. That's kind of got a nice dotted feel, but let's try the G. the one. Right, so let's build these into contact. First I need to set up groups, just one for each signal, and we can just dump the zones in group by group. Now can contact allow for multiple instances of the same samples? Well actually it can do one better than that. It has this function called duplicate zones. So first we're completing the octaves and then I think what I'm going to do so the delays don't get too quick, I'm going to drag those octaves down. So we've got four octaves in total. Now we need to rinse and repeat for each group and there's something strangely satisfying about this process. Okay, so that's the easy bit I think done. Next thing is to kind of jump into this instrument bussing and 
scripting. Now, I really recommend, I'm not gonna show you how I did it on this video, I just recommend you go and have a look at David Hillowitz's video, and please do subscribe to his channel. He really is a gift to the community. But before then, a little bit of a jam on a Rhodes, maybe. From Marcus Keys, apologies again if I'm mispronouncing your name. This is the sample version of my Fender Rhodes Mark II 73. It was built in 1982 and has its very own special character, a little quirky here and there, which is what we like. So get it, play it, and feel free to build something completely new with the samples if you want to. Thank you so much, Marcus. So let's have a listen to that. Now, apologies today. I'm using the M32, and whilst I gave it a glittering review in the film that I made a couple of days ago uh, with small keyboards, the thing that really suffers is velocity. So the scaling may feel a little bit lumpy. Some Fender sample you've given the community. I can imagine that with delays and reverbs it's going to sound awesome. Time for me to brush up on my scripting and see how I get along. Hey presto, a kind of pirated, bastardised version of David Hillowitz's script. Thanks again David for your help on this. And if we go here you can see that we've got the four different signals there. So let's look at C2. So we've got C2, root C2, 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 and then we've got another sample, C sharp two, C sharp two. So they're in time. And then if we go up to the G, you'll see that, that again is C2 is the root note, and it's that same sample as the C2, but pitched up, and that should give us our triplet. And another thing I did, which I don't know, might be just a, a no-brainer for you guys, but it's, uh, it's something that I really enjoyed, let's get rid of the script editor, is I treated the ADSR of the different signals differently. And this has kind of blown my mind a bit. So if we use our fancy new, you'll hear the pedal, because it's got this really long decay, I've, I've given it a really long, thousands of milliseconds. really is playing out. Now the echo fix, because we want to really play around with these uh, uh, decays, I've set actually to a 4.9k millisecond release. That's, it's almost like a one shot. So let's just go up and do this again. And on it goes. And then if we just look at the Porter Studio, which is the dry signal, I've just set that to a much more standard, just 300 millisecond much more natural. The net result, though, is something that is just um, an absolute pleasure to play. I can't tell you how excited I am to have been successful in this endeavor. Thank you, David. And this is what this community is all about, inspiring us to investigate, to awaken our interest. And I think the delay thing is something I want to expand upon and possibly go back and make a slightly less experimental piano, which I think would be quite fun to make a kind of a modular Monday piano book mashup. It has the promise of being a gorgeous looking video at worst. But talking of good looking videos, yes, it's John Mayer. Well, hello, my name is John Mayer and I love drums. Most of the time, the louder, the better. But there are times when I want that traditional drum kit vibe to go along with the softer, quieter music that I'm making. I don't always want to reach for shakers or cajones or other light percussion instruments. I want the sound of drums being hit just quieter. So this video is about making soft drum samples. Right, this is going to be lumpy on this keyboard, but I'll do as best as I can. Thanks 
again, John, and please, when you go and watch his videos, subscribe. This is what motivates us on. If you don't subscribe to people's channels, they'll simply stop making the stuff because this is how we get motivated. Hit the like button as well. So the rest of the kind of some of my picks of the December submissions that I'd like to go through, they're all kind of guitar based, starting with bass harmonic chimes. Chris. Arthur Bau says, I only recently got into sampling, good for you, initially from a few other sources, and then realized how far it could be taken after watching Christian's channel. Thank you, mate. Since then, I've been looking at everything around my house to see if I could capture and create something truly unique and beautiful. I'm completely new to this, but I'm hooked. I'm so grateful for this site and community. Well, we're grateful for your contribution, Chris. I can see you've got the old release which is a little bit ugly. Um, just remember on EXSs to save settings to instruments when you've, so you kind of have to save EXSs twice. You, you save this layer in instrument, save as, and then you need to also save settings to instrument for anything that you do on the front panel here. Lovely quite simple there and you've got some movement going on inside. What I love about it is it's not immediately associable, you know, it could almost be an electric piano. A um, little trick that I like doing with these sounds that are very kind of shiny and pure is to hope this doesn't insult your hard work. What I do is I get the vocal transformer and I just shift it like one formant and then doesn't do anything when you're playing single notes, but the minute you play different notes, you can obviously mix that down a bit. And then a bit of reverb. Such just simple, but with character, such a pure, beautiful signal, with just that little bit of motion, absolutely stunning. Next up, ukulele. James Blunsden has said, this was a fun sample of my Brunswick ukulele being plucked. I received this instrument as a gift from my good friend Judith, who I used to work with when I was a gap student at Beachborough School. We would teach ukulele to the kids together, playing four chord songs, such as Bob Marley, Three Little Birds. We only knew four chords. Slap some reverb on this and it can sound lovely. There's just one velocity layer. When the notes are stretched and played into the lower registers, it has an interesting harp-like quality. This was recorded using an SM58, brilliant, with a Mackie Onyx Artist 1.2. So let's be obedient. My go-to large Vienna. Do we have another naughty cheeky monkey? Yes, we do. Okay, so let's take that up there. has an almost Koto-like quality. Now, I'm gonna do as you said and go down. Absolutely beautiful. I wonder if by applying the same technique that we're doing with the delay experiment, by actually dragging these regions down, you'll just get a slightly more variety. Something I would really recommend doing is if you go to Spitfire Audio Labs and download the Charango, that's my brother playing a small uh, South American instrument. And if you just listen to every sample, what he did was he purposely played it very different for each note. What I've noticed about this, and it's, it's great and it's lovely and pristine, is it's very uniform. And I think if you find, if you had another go, James, by purposely making it as ununiform as humanly possible, it'll sound even more convincing, even more realistic. But thanks so much. Finally. On my college course, we talk a lot about how to be unique and how to find your own voice when it comes to writing film music. Often that authenticity doesn't come from the purchase of some commercial sample library, but more because you can sing or because you have access to a rare discontinued guitar pedal. A few years ago, a very famous guitarist publicly shared their amp settings online, and I remember a second guitarist saying, I can't believe you've just done that, you've given away your sound. To which the first guitarist said, no, because no one plays like me. 
I found this to be really liberating because like guitarist too, I realized I'd held my sounds close to my chest for a long time, as if they somehow defined my output as a composer. I later realized that just because you have access to my sounds, that doesn't mean you're gonna make my music. I think there's something wonderful about a community that not only openly shares, but openly creates for each other. And this is where Piano Book enters, a wonderful site that has access to, I think, hundreds of instruments now, uh, created for and by the community. And today I've got a quick overview of thrumming textures. do if you own an Apple you've got this free suite of plugins and AU pitch is good in its badness so basically what I'm going to do is do this smooth just create some interest let's take this up to 400 I'm just going to put a little basically a bit of uh, real brightness on these samples see what this sounds like So do check out Dan's film, linked below, along with John's. Really love it when you can contribute to uh, films as well, and we'll try and get that up on the product page soon. And if you do go to their YouTube channels, always chuck them a like and subscribe. is just a great way of motivating people to continue. Okay, so I'm gonna stop there. We have some incredible treats to share with you in the next video. If you can't wait until then, go along to pianobook.co.uk, pick up some free instruments, and all I can say is requiem. Thanks, as always, ah, uh, I forgot the good news. If you recall, in this video, I put out a poll talking about how I think the demos people make are absolutely astonishing, really good works of art, and wanted to see if there was a consensus behind us possibly creating a piano book library. Here's where the good news is. I've recently had a meeting, in fact, it was a meeting in a coffee shop where next to us, on the table next to us, was Arnold Schwarzenegger, which was uh, uh, somewhat distracting. But I have just had a meeting with the head of one of the biggest library music companies in the world, and he's very, very interested. So I'm in the process of negotiating a label deal with this massive library company for Piano Book. So keep your demos coming in. It's gonna be piano centric. So think about when you're doing demos for stuff that maybe, I don't know, for example, one of these guitar libraries, you may want to do a contextual version with a piano on. So that can be considered for the library or the production music catalog as well. But well done to you because it's on the strength of the demos that this interest has been created. Excellent. Right, that really is it for this week. So do subscribe. I, I just, the, the thought of Piano Book becoming a place where composers not only share, inspire and stimulate, but actually earn money is a very exciting one indeed. Ding that bell if you want to be notified the next time I put a video up. And one of those, which is for everything. See you next time. <laughs>